All right. So great insight into Michael Jordan and his legacy. I'm going to throw it over to Chad first and see what Chad has written down. I mean, I loved The Last Dance. I thought it was a great documentary and it truly did have so much in there on leadership. So what were you able to pull out from this? Well, I don't want to, uh, he was pretty clear on his points, so I don't want to take them all. So I'll, I'll, I'll point out the few and you guys can fill in the blanks. But um, the first one I love that he, that he talked about was ex- that experience is the best teacher is false. And my favorite quote I've ever heard on this is that um, sometimes wisdom comes with age and sometimes age comes all by itself. And I think we all know people, old people who are uh, older, but they're not smarter and they're not more mature and they're not full of wisdom at all. So that was the first thing I wrote down. Um, I love too the idea that, that John talked about that success being greater than talent and even mentioning that, you know, there may be 20, 25 people um, in basketball that had more talent. Than, than Michael Jordan. So talent is good. Talent gets you so far, but work ethic, I think will, will always get us further. Um, and then one thing I jotted down here is just, you, you've, you've got to be hungry. You know, that that's, that's such an important part of all this is that, you know, cause he said it's an inside, you know, you win, you win from the inside. Uh, let's see, I'll skip, I'll, I'll leave a couple of these out. <laughs> the margin between winning and losing being very small. You know, it makes me think of that, the slight edge philosophy, because it's, it's the daily disciplines, the daily disciplines over time that seem to make no difference in the act of doing them. It makes all the difference or it's the simple errors in judgment. And you can just tell that Michael was filling his day up with just so many small wins that to a lot of people would have been like, Oh, do you really have to do that? Do you really have to do that? And it was just those little one percenters, just those, you know, consistency, consistency of doing the things uh, that a champion does. I love the patience first pressure point because I think that's important for all of us to understand because if we put too much pressure on someone, we can literally push them away, right? We can repel them, push them out of the, out of the business. So we have to just give them a little bit, you know, a little bit of pressure and a, pro- and a lot of patience too, you know, in, in this kind of, uh, in this kind of business that one of my favorite definitions of leadership is, is doing, um, getting someone to do something that they wouldn't have done if you wouldn't have been there. So to me, that's that little, you're just applying just enough pressure because you're calling out the greatness in somebody and you're reminding them of who they want to become. And when you apply that type of pressure that you're just basically reminding them of what they told you that they want to become, what they told you they want to accomplish, reminding them and giving them that little bit of pressure. It's, it's really, really good. Mental toughness is the core of a champion. And I think that that inside, you know, it's inside game and, and we have to constantly be growing that and working on that because it's just like the gar, our mind is like a garden. And if we're not constantly in there, we doing the pulling the weeds and adding the all the stuff that's necessary to grow our mind the right way then then we start to lose gram instead of gaining gram uh i'll just do one or two more here um keep an ego in check that's a huge one <laughs> pride and ego have to always always keep that in check because we don't have to always lift the team above ourselves team always has to always be the most important thing being the example that's huge that's what gives us what he explained as moral authority and yeah so I'll stop there so I want to go back through uh the last dance and you know Michael Jordan just there's so much to learn from him just as a a high 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 level achiever and everything that's what's so cool about this business is that we can pull and glean all these things from all these high achievers and all these different industries because it typically comes down to the same few things that most people aren't willing to do. And if we, if any of us want to have what we've never had, we have to do what we've never done. And if we want to achieve what we've never achieved, then we have to, we have to implement brand new activities, brand new disciplines to get us there. And so that's what all of these people like Michael Jordan, 
you know, Michael Jordan was the first one at practice and the last one to leave. And if we want to accomplish amazing things in our business, we just have to have that type of commitment and that type of work ethic. So, um, yeah, I love this one, Joel. Thanks for bringing this one on here. Yeah, absolutely. It, I'm like, uh, how many notes can I get in a short 30 minute window? I mean, this is, this is intense. Uh, Again, going down to our resident professional athlete, we'll throw it down to Tay and see what kind of golden nuggets he got from this. Yeah, this was, it was, it was good. And it was kind of refreshing because I, I was one of those people that showed up every Sunday to watch the last dance. So it was kind of good to hear it again. Uh, I think it was so good for me. I think just with any sports in general to win and to win at a high level for a long period of time, it takes a lot of intentionality, a lot of focus. And it takes almost everybody on board uh, really kind of setting aside the ego and really figuring out ways, like Chad said, to stay hungry and really just pursue things that's outside of, like, uh, whatever you're going to. Because I played – when I played professional indoor football, like, our team was uh, dominating that, like, that entire league for years. Like, when I was there, we won uh, a three-peat back-to-back-to-back championships. uh, And we did it every single year, and it wasn't the same group. Like, every year, like, people were tired, people would go to other teams, we would bring new people on. But the thing that was constant was the culture. Uh, the thing that was constant was the way practice was set up. There wasn't a, uh, you know, but we won this week, we won a championship last week, so we're going to take it easy. Uh, this week, we're going to give you guys off time. This week, like, no, like, everything was always on schedule. You always did things a certain type of way. And like you said, like, the greatest competition wasn't the teams in the league. The greatest competition was our defense at practice. That was our, like, and so when we showed up to games, we already showing up knowing that we was going to win. Teams kind of feared us in the sense that when we came out, like, they wasn't going to face their defense versus our, our offense. Like, when we came together on that game day, it was a collective unit. We showed up and we dominated the field, whether we was home or away. And that started all in practice because we had that same mentality toward each other. And I think the greatest thing about Michael Jordan is when you reach this uh, certain level of just you winning all these championships, like you literally have to find ways to uh, keep yourself motivated. And when you uh, look at the documentary, like he will find little things to motivate him, himself. And that's what I think I love about him the most. It was like he would create stories just so he can give himself that edge or somehow he can give himself that chip on the shoulder. So uh, just, a, just a great, great, uh, great documentary. And I think what I love about uh, kind of throwing this in and the notes, we'll get to the notes now. <laughs> uh, John said, uh, great talent plus great choices. And then he said, be a talent plus person. And I love that. And I think that's what a lot of people understand. He gave the example of uh, the coach bringing in the guy. He would say, uh, you know, there's more people that sound more talented to you and they're in the gym working right now. So when they meet you, they're probably going to win because they already outwork you. And I think the same thing with just anything in life, you have to understand, like, you aren't the most talented person that you will ever meet. There are more talented people, uh, and they're, all, they're doing the work. So you have to understand, like, you have to consistently be doing the work. You have to consistently be doing personal development. You have to cont- consistently be growing yourself because you have to understand, like, there's – there's so many resources, there's so many lanes of success that people are going to have success, but you have to stay focused on your lane. You have to continue to do what you're doing and just continue to grow uh, so that you can't keep that edge about yourself. So I just love that talent plus person understanding, like you may be great at communication, but if you can communicate, but you can't lead, then you probably aren't going to be successful long term. You probably have that short term success and you probably move on to that next thing. So you have to build something that will allow you to sustain uh, in the long run. Then the second thing uh, that I think you love, and I think just with just the, the uh, this business in general, network marketing, I think a lot of people uh, need, to, need to hear John say this. He said, if you knew how close you are to succeeding, you would be greatly encouraged. And I think a lot of people, they put in the work for a long time and they don't see the, the fruit of it. And they kind of wonder why aren't things working the way uh, that it's working for this person. This person just came in and they're already promoting and doing this. And I think many times you have to stay in your lane. You have to focus on your journey. You have to understand there's certain things that you have to go through. Uh, like you said, like experience isn't the best teacher. It, it evaluated experiences. So you have to evaluate some of the things that you're doing and make those little tweaks. And sometimes that's all it takes is you making one slight tweak in your word and whatever you're doing, and that will uh, em- uh, elevate you to a, a totally different level. So many times I think you have to stay focused on your journey and just understand that you're like, you, 
literally you are inside the picture so you can't see everything that's going on but god can and he's steering you as you continue to come to him he's steering you into the direction that you want to go so you have to kind of keep an open mind and not stay focused uh, on the journey for other people and then i'll just share two more uh things i love that he talked about uh winning is an inside job and for me i think part of when you say winning is inside job uh showing up to the zoom every tuesday and thursday this is an inside job this is you cared enough about yourself to stay invested in your personal growth. This isn't something that the company forced you to do. Like we don't, we don't have to do this. This is something that we personally want to show up to do because we understand like this is a part of our growth process. This is a part of us giving back and just teaching others the same thing. So uh, you have to do the things that other people aren't doing. You have to show up uh, at this time every single morning because you know a lot of people aren't doing this and this is going to continue to give you that air. This is going to allow you to do things that other people aren't doing so you can have the things that they don't have. Uh, and just the last thing that I said, uh, and he, he said, your standard for yourself have to be higher than your standard for other people. And I just think that is leading by example. Uh, you can't expect your team to do things that you aren't done. Many times your team are exactly what, he, what you have led them. So if you feel like your team aren't where they need to be, then you need to check yourself. You probably aren't where you need to be. So I think you have to evaluate the, the actions uh, that you're taking. You have to evaluate what you're doing, your personal development, your uh, showing up to everything. You have to evaluate that and uh, really point the finger back at yourself and then correct that and make those uh, slight tweaks and then start leaving from a place of grace and leave from mercy and understanding patience and all those things that's going to allow you to become a better leader so uh i love this personally because i'm just a michael jordan fan he's for me he's always going to be the goat we have those conversations but it is about what he do on the court i think for me it's what he allowed his teammates to do he brought the greatness out of a lot of people even though it put him in a position where he was uh looked at as the guy that nobody liked and i think when you hear the stories of these guys his teammate looking back now i think they love him for it because he pulled so much greatness out of them that probably nobody else wanted to do because he challenged them and that's what a lot of people don't like to do they don't like to be challenged they like to go with what's comfortable so they can have that comfortable route to success but we know success isn't comfortable you have to be pushed outside of your, your comfort zone you have to be pushed to a level that's going to allow you to get to that greater uh that greater person who you are on the inside and i think uh that's why he kind of get this bad rap as a bad teammate because he challenged people and i think that's what you have to do start challenging people that's in a way that forced them outside of their comfort zone but it's also forcing them to grow up it's forcing them to do things that they probably wouldn't do if you didn't do it for him. So uh, I just love this and I'm glad that we got to go back and listen to John, just kind of give him his, his uh, leadership tips on this because you know he's an expert in this and I just love the fact that he can take one documentary. I never thought about sitting down and taking notes on it, but he sat down, took notes on it and shared it with us. So it's kind of giving me a perspective when you do things, do it with intentionality. Do it with the purpose of teaching it so that you can, not, you can be more resourceful in it. So uh, thanks for sharing this with Joe. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I did check. It is available on Netflix now. So uh, I think it was a seven or 10 part series. So uh, it, it's pretty good in detail. And for those of you that haven't watched it yet, I, I wholeheartedly agree with Tay. Do exactly like what John did. Watch it with intentionality and take notes on the leadership lessons that you can learn from it. Uh, I love point number one, you know, his success was greater than his talent. Um, cause talent is never enough. Uh, he alluded to it in the, in the statement when the coach, uh, brought the young man in, in, in college and basically said, Hey, there's, there's people out there that don't have your talent that are working harder than you. And the moment you guys show up on the court together, they will beat you. You know, hustle without talent will always beat talent without hustle. It's just the way things work. It's like an uncommon law. It's the tortoise and the hare. It's, it's the way things operate. Once you figure that out, now it's time to hustle. Uh, teamwork multiplies talent. That's why our business of network marketing is so revolutionary and so different than anything out there in the corporate world is because you cannot be successful unless you help other people be successful, unless you raise for everyone on your team, the level, of, then nobody wins. And so the one thing that I, I like, and Tay pointed it out and then Chad touched on it too, was the fact that, you know, Michael Jordan was the greatest player individual. I mean, you know, you've got LeBron, you've got Kobe, you know, they're in that <laughs> mix. And like John said, there's probably a handful of 20 people that you could put in that greatest of all time 
category. But the differentiator between Michael Jordan and all of the rest of them was that not only was Michael Jordan the greatest player, he was able to elevate the game of those around them. So not just him, his excellence wasn't just on display. He brought the excellence out in others, not just in his own team. He brought excellence out of the people that he was competing against because they wanted to up their game so that they could be like Mike. You know, the great commercial, be like Mike. Everybody wanted to be like Mike. Why? Because Mike lifted the level for everybody. Be that type of leader. Be the leader that lifts the level for everybody around you. Um, I love how he said best is about now. Right now, the three of us are giving our best to you. But that doesn't mean tomorrow we can't make it better. So best is about what you're doing today. Better is a journey to make your best better. Your best today should be your floor for tomorrow. You could get better tomorrow. I love that. Uh, number two, you know, the margin between winning and losing is very, very small, but it's very, very impactful. If you knew how close you were to having success, you wouldn't stop going. And that's what successful people know. They know that that next success is right around the corner. So they keep driving, they keep driving, they keep driving, they keep driving. And that's why they achieve success because they always know it's the next day. They may not get the success today, but they know the success will come tomorrow. You may not sign their distributor today, but you may sign them tomorrow. So why would you stop tomorrow if you know it's going to come tomorrow? The top 10% of people are successful. The top 1% is where the super successful are. That, that was one of the things that separated Michael Jordan from everyone else is that he did all of the things that the successful people were doing and then he added on top of it. So what are you doing above and beyond what those around you are doing to separate yourself from the other people? Like he said, when you go the extra mile, it's lonely because most people don't go the extra mile. Three, mental toughness is the core of a champion. It comes down to mindset. We talk about this nonstop mindset. What you think is what you say, then what you say becomes what you have. So if mindset and mental toughness is important, it's going to get you the results that you want. <clears throat> Winning is an inside job. I know you both talked about that too. You know, the number four point kind of goes past that. And he said, this is the one that nobody really talks about, that losing greatness is usually an inside job. You know, everybody talks about, well, you know, winning comes from within, winning comes from within, but nobody ever comes up and says, hey guys, uh, have you ever looked at yourself? That's the reason why you're losing. You know, people always want to blame it on outside things. It's this that caused me to not be successful. It's this person that's holding me back. It's this person saying, no, the reason why my team isn't. The, it's because corporate isn't running this promotion. That's why I'm not being successful. It's always about outside influences. But the truth of the matter is, is you have to look inside and see what it is that's happening within you that's causing you to not achieve your greatest levels of um, success. I looked down at the next note and then I was like, I lost my thought. Because uh, the thing that he says, John says this all the time and it, it is so absolutely true. Leading me is the hardest thing to do on the face of the planet. The three of us can sit here all day long and tell you all of these cool things and it's so much easier to tell you guys all of these great things than it is for us to really sit down and go, hey, did I do this today? If I didn't do it today, but guess what? Tomorrow I'm going to do better. Number five was be the example so you can be the one people follow. This is where John talks about moral authority. As a leader, moral authority is the highest level of leadership you can have. And what it comes down to is people will follow you because you are doing the things that you say you will do. 
so with Michael Jordan, he was one of those leaders that uh, they talked about his team didn't like him. Well, it was because he was holding them accountable. But the thing that he, I mean, there were a couple audio clips in the, the uh, documentary where he was basically saying, I'm not asking you to do anything that I'm not already doing. So step up your game. You know, I'm not calling you out to make you look foolish. I'm calling you out because I want you to be better. The things that he was doing was constantly holding his team accountable for their lack of work. He wanted them to put in the same amount of work that he put in. <clears throat> and that's one of the hardest things about being a super high achiever of his level is people look at him as the bad guy. You know, a lot of the, uh, I guess you would say articles and stuff that came out while this was, cause it was released every week. There was like two episodes a week and after each one, everyone was like, Oh, I'm going to sit down and be a armchair quarterback and, and give my commentary on. And a lot of the stuff was, man, Michael Jordan was mean. Michael Jordan's a jerk. Michael Jordan was just a bad person. No, Michael Jordan was a driven leader that held his people accountable. He would rather have respect over the approval of his team and he'd rather lead them <clears throat> than have them like him. He was on a path to a specific destination. And if you weren't on that train with him, he didn't need you on his train. He'd revoke your ticket. I mean, it's kind of funny watching the training videos because I'm like, well, did Phil actually coach or was it Jordan coaching the team? You know, it's one of those things like he just was there kind of managing everybody, but Jordan was the one that was pushing all the practices. So know that it's okay if people get upset with you as long as you know that you're doing the right thing and you're going in the right direction. It's because they can't seem to comprehend the goal and the vision that you have for you, but not only the goal and the vision that you have for you, the goal and the vision that you have for them. So do an extra step and make sure that you're sharing that vision for them. Because I think that's one of the missing steps that most people kind of miss out on is they talk about the goal of where they're going, but you need to tell them how they fit into that goal and what piece they play on the team. And that was one of the things that he was very good at. Uh, I remember when it was Steve Kerr and him got into arguments, but Steve later on in life, like Tay was saying, was looking back going, I appreciate what he did because I would not have been the player that I was had he not pulled this out of me. When he told me what my role was in the team, it allowed me to operate completely different than I was before because I didn't know what I was supposed to be doing. And then the final one was number six. One is too small of a number to achieve greatness. The majority of the decisions that you make as a leader should be based on benefiting your team. You know, there is no I in team. It's the funniest little statement ever, but it's the absolute truth. When you're the leader of the team, it's your goal to do things in order for the entire team to win. So make sure that you build your team, you lead your team, you challenge your team, you hold your team accountable, and you as the leader continue to grow and go in the direction that benefits the whole team, not just you as the player. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Hopefully you love this. Make sure you go check out the Last Dance documentary. It was very, very impactful. And take great notes through the lens of leadership. Can't wait to see you guys again here. See you later.